that a Muslim is trying to get saved. If I were asked you right now, every one of you, if you were to die tonight, if you were to die in five minutes, do you know for sure that you would go to heaven? Do you know, not according to this book, how can you say that, my friends? Because even Muhammad, are you better than your prophet Muhammad? Listen to what this says. I'm going to read to you from the Quran. I am not the one who brings newly made up faith among the messengers, nor do I know what will be done with me or you. If the, your prophet Muhammad, my Muslim friend, didn't even know where he was going, how can you know? Are you better than him? Let's get real tonight. Let's get real tonight. I want to read to you some words. This is what 46.9, Surah 49, Ayah 6 says in the Quran. By Allah, I do not know what will be done to me. Narrated Um Al Allah, an Ansari woman who gave the pledge of allegiance to the Prophet that the Ansar drew lots concerning the dwelling of the immigrants. Uthman bin Mazun was, was decided to dwell with them. Uthman fell ill and I nursed him till he died and we covered him with his clothes. Then the Prophet came to us and I, addressing the dead body of Uthman, said, O oh Abu As-Sayyib, may Allah's mercy be upon you. I bear witness that Allah has honored you. On that the Prophet said, listen, how do you know that Allah has honored him? I replied, I do not know. May my father and my mother be sacrificed for you, O oh Allah's ap apostle. But who else is worthy of it if not Uthman? He said, as to him, by Allah death has overtaken him. And I hope the best for him. By Allah, though I am the apostle of Allah, yet I do not know what Allah will do to me. Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 5, book 58, number 266. By Allah, though I am the apostle of Allah, so I ask you tonight, my friends, if the Quran that was written by your prophet, supposedly a prophet, Muhammad, he didn't even know. How in the world can you know? There's only one way you can know. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, the Holy Bible, the Holy Word of God says, These things have I written unto you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. I know that I have eternal life right now because it's a gift. It's a gift. And I will read another verse to you from the Quran because tonight we're in a debate about the most important thing that we can be talking about. God has created us, correct? God has created us in His image. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says in the Holy Bible, God has set eternity in their hearts. You and I are going to be in eternity. And the only thing that really matters is where you will be in eternity after you die. All this will pass away. So there's nothing more important than what we're talking about tonight. Nothing more important than those Quran, Surah 23, Ayah 102. Then those whose balance of good deeds is heavy. This is what Muslims believe. That there's a scales. You got the scales of your good works, 
on the scales of your bad works, of your sins. Many religions believe that. Roman Catholicism, I was born a Roman Catholic, that's what they believe. Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, many religions believe the same way. If I do enough good things that outweigh my bad things, my, my sins, then maybe, maybe God will let me into heaven. I don't know for sure, but maybe He will. And this is what the Quran says. Then those whose balance of good deeds is heavy, these they will be successful. And those whose balance of good is light, will those who have lost their souls, they will live in Jehenim, in hell. So I ask you tonight, do you know right now, if you have more good or more evil, what do you think? And I'm going to ask you another question. Don't you think God, Allah, should tell you what the tally is? What the number? How many numbers? How many bad things have you done? Don't you, wouldn't you want to know if that's the way it is? How many good things? What's, it, what's the scale look like right now in your life? What's it look like? My friends, it's not, that is not the way a person goes to heaven. Because the Holy Bible tells us that your sins have already canceled you out. All the wrong things that you've done. If you do five wrong things in one day, you look with lust at a woman. You look at pornography. You smoke a cigarette and put smoke into your lungs. You lie. You take the name of God in vain. You steal. You cheat. You're dishonest. You're proud. You're self-righteous. All those things are enough to take you down to Jehenim. And the scales are going down. And you, you can try to do what you can try to do good. But all those bad things are enough to take you down. Do you understand, my friends? That's why we have to understand from the Holy Bible that salvation is a gift. It's a gift! Because God paid for it. God paid for it. If you were to invite me to your house, because you liked me. I, I am a likable person sometimes. And you invited me to your house because you liked me. And you, and you made some good food. Pakistani food or Nigerian food, Ahmed. And you made a big dinner for me. And we ate and we had a good time. And we, we ate and we had a good time. And it was 12 o'clock at night. And I said... Ahmed, I pull out my wallet and I try to give you $50 for the food and the good time. You know what? He wouldn't take it. That would be an insult. In most cultures of the world, that would be an insult. Because you liked me and you wanted to show me that you liked me and you cared about me and you made all that food. It was a gift. It was a hadia. It was a hadia. And if I tried to pay you, that would be an insult. That would be like slapping you. Your goodness, your kindness to me, your gift. No. It's a hadia, my friends. And that's what God did for us. He gave us a hadiyah through Jesus Christ. And we'd like to thank Lazaro, Evangelist Lazaro Lopez for his introduction. And now I'd like to bring uh, Sheikh Ahmed Awal for his introduction.
اعوذ باللہ سبی العلیم من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وکل جاء الحق و زحق الباطل ان الباطل کان زہوکا ونزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء و رحمت للمؤمنین ولا يزد الظالمین الا خسارا وکل یا اہل الكتاب تعالو الى کلمت سواء بيننا و بينكم اللہ نعبد الا اللہ ولا نشرک بھی شیئا ولا يتخذ بارنا بالا اربابا من دون اللہ فإن تولوا فقولوا اشهدوا بأننا مسلم Truth have come and falsehood have perished Anytime truth comes falsehood is bound by nature to perish Mr. Chairman respected guests and honorable speaker Mr. Lopez between myself and Pastor Lopez God Almighty is the witness that Brother Lopez have stand here for 30 minutes and he never solved the issue. The issue was salvation through the Quran or salvation through the Bibles. But as you can see, you bear witness that he never taught the subject. So I have already computed what I've got, I'm going to say in my head already. But because of what he said, I have rechanneled what I'm going to be speaking. So, I'm going to be speaking on salvation through the Bible and the Quran as I go. Both, inshallah. Where do I begin? From the beginning. You see, the concept of salvation in Christendom is actually based on the fact that Jesus Christ died for the sin of mankind. So, I remember in the Bible, in the book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 14, Paul said, if Christ did not die or if Christ did not rise from the dead our salvation our preaching is vain and our faith is vain that means Christ have to die if he did not die our preaching is vain is garbage and our faith our religion is also garbage according to Paul so the concept of Christendom is for Jesus Christ to die and for his blood to clean the sin of mankind and we read in the Bible again, in 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 8, Paul said, Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, raised from the dead, according to my gospel. According to my gospel, meaning there were many gospels out there at that time that are actually fighting with the gospel of Paul, that Christ did not die. So he said, remember that Christ, the seed of David, raised from the dead according to my gospel then again we read in the book of galatians chapter 3 verse 13 paul trying so hard to crucify and kill jesus in the book of galatians chapter 3 verse 13 galatians chapter 3 verse 13 paul said galatians 3 13 paul said christ redeemed us from the curse of the law in as much that he became a curse for us. Because it is written, whosoever is hung on a tree is an a curse of God. May the curse of God be upon him. The Bible says that. So, why would Paul say Christ became a curse for us? Christ became a curse for us? And he came, became a curse for us? Christ becoming a curse for us? I don't understand. How could Christ become a curse? Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Which law? The law of Moses. The law of Moses is not a curse. It is not a curse. But this is what Paul said. That Jesus Christ is a curse for us having died on the cross so that his blood will cleanse us. So now, this is what Paul is saying. But I'm going to ask Jesus here, did you actually die on the cross? And I'm going to quote as many scripture as possible to substantiate that Christ did not die on the cross according to the Bible. Christ did not die. Paul said, if Christ died on the cross, our preaching is vain. Our salvation is vain. And our teaching is vain. Inshallah, I'm going to prove tonight that Christ did not die on the cross according to Christ himself. Where do I begin? I begin from the Gospels. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Jesus Christ said, Do not think that I, Jesus Christ, have come to destroy the law of Moses and the prophet. 
I have not come to destroy. I have come to confirm. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but a dot from the law shall not pass till all is fulfilled. And whoso therefore do the law of Moses and teach somebody so will become great in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever cancel the law of Moses and teach somebody so will become least in the kingdom of heaven. How could Christ become a curse when he is saying that if you want to go to heaven, the law of Moses. In Jerusalem, as Christ was walking in Jerusalem, a man who wants to go to heaven, a man who wants to go to eternal life, a man who wants to be among the kingdom of God came to him in Jerusalem. And the man said, and I'm quoting in the book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 16, the man said, good master, what good must I do to enter heaven? This man is looking for salvation. So he came to the right person, Jesus. He said, good master, what good thing must I do to enter life eternally in heaven? Jesus Christ said, why do you call me good for? Don't begin by elevating me. Why does thou call me good for? The only one that is good is the Father in heaven. But if you want to enter heaven, you want salvation, keep the commandment of Moses. And the man said, Master, what is the commandment? And Jesus repeated exactly what Abraham said, what Moses said, what Isaiah said, what Nehemiah said, what Nehum said, what Daniel said, what Ezekiel said, what Habakkuk said, what Haggai said. Jesus spoke in Hebrew and he said, the only way you go to heaven is this. And he spoke in Hebrew. Shema Israela Adonai Elahun Adonai Ehud. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. If you believe in this, heaven is yours. Did he mention that he's going to die for one time? No, Mr. La Mr. Lazarus. So, the, I'm quoting the master because the master himself said, the, se the master is greater than the servant. Paul, who have never seen Jesus, for once, never seen Jesus out of nowhere, he began to write gospel. Ephesians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, First John, Second John, Timothy. You contradict any Christian, Timothy, Galatians. Why don't you call the master himself? The master said, the master is greater than the servant. So Jesus Christ is telling us how to go to heaven, keep the commandment of Moses. The man asked him, master, what of the commandment? And he said, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt keep the Sabbath as a holy day, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet your daughter's wife. And he expounded the Ten Commandments. And he said, if you keep this, salvation is yours, meaning you will enter heaven. This is the case. Christ did not die on the cross. Who said that? Jesus Christ said that. Where? In the gospel. You see, Paul said, salvation. I give you a quotation. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 9. Paul said, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Christ raised from the dead, you are saved. No work. Just believe in your, say with your lips, and confirm in your heart that Christ was risen from the dead, you will be saved. But Christ, let's see what Christ said about this. Jesus Christ said, Christ said, in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus Christ said, these people, they worship me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching the doctrine of men, men like Paul, who wrote the books. Paul, Paul said in Romans 10.9 that you confess with your lips and you believe in your heart. But Christ said, these people, they worship me with their lips. Their heart is far away from me. In vain are they worshiping me, teaching the doctrine of men. Men wrote the book. Men wrote it. Christ did not write it, nor did the disciple wrote it. It was written over 325 years after Christ left the earth. Where? In the council of Nisi, Constantine, and the pagan king was the leader of that community. Christ did not die on the cross. I give you the book of John, the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Christ said, Not all those who call me Lord, Lord will enter heaven, but those who do the will of God in heaven, they will enter heaven. And he said, On that day, which day? The day of Kiyama. Many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name we cast out devil. In your name we do so many mighty works. And Jesus Christ said, and I will tell them, get away from me. I don't know you. You who worship me for nothing on that day. Do Muslims call Jesus Lord, Lord? No. The Jewish, do they call Jesus Lord, Lord? No. The Hindus, do they call Jesus Lord, Lord? No. Who call him Lord? The Christians. 
And he said, on that day, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? In your name we cast out devil. In your name we do mighty works. And Jesus said, I don't know you. Get away from me, you who work iniquity. The word iniquity in Greek means those who worship me for nothing. Simple, clear-cut statement from the lips of Jesus. And you say he died for your son? Let's ask Jesus. You see, 24 hours before Jesus Christ was supposed to have been on the cross, he took his disciples to the garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Peter, you stand here. John, you stand here. And he put them in strategic position. And the Bible said in the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, and Jesus went little further, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, and he said, Oh, my father, let this cup pass away from me, not as I will, but as thou will. What did he do? And Jesus fall on his face like we do, like the Muslims do. He fall on his face, and he pray like I do. And he said, Oh, my father, let this cup pass away from me, not as I will, but as thou will. What is the cup? If you have a Bible with concordance, with index and cross reference, look up for the word cup. It means death. Cup means death. Death. So he said, in effect, Oh, my father, let this cup, let this death pass away from me, not as I will, but as thou will. Again, in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 35, he said, Abba, Abba, I know that all things are possible with thee. Please remove this cup of death away from me. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 44, being in an agony, Jesus, he prayed more earnestly, and the angels came down and supported him and assured him. In the Quran, we said, Wa ayednahum biruhul qudus. The angel came and strengthened him. He doesn't want to die. He prayed more earnestly. And his face was as if great blood from the face to the ground. And the angels came down and assured him. Meaning, he is not going to die. Who says so? Jesus. Where? In the Bible. Which page? Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Jesus said, Knock, and it shall be opened. Seek, and ye shall find. Ask, and it shall be, you know, heard. What kind of father is it when you ask him for a bread, he gives you a stone? Or you ask him for a fish, he gives you a, a snake. My father in heaven give good things to those who ask of him. So ask my father. So he asked the father, he doesn't want to die. But Paul crucified him. Christ did not die on the cross. Who says so? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 26, verse 14. It says, that false prophets, that false prophets shall be put to death. The false prophet and the dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. All false prophets, according to the Bible, shall be put to death. I'm asking the question, how did Paul end his life? What was the end of Paul? Paul was beheaded, cut into pieces. Where? In Rome, at the time of Emperor Nero. He was beheaded and cut into pieces. In the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 14 said, The false prophet and a dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. How was Peter killed? Peter was hung on the cross upside down. False prophets. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 22 all the way to 24. It says, If a man commits a crime and you hang him on the cross, you shall by no means bury him that same day. For whosoever is hung on the cross is an a curse of God. May the curse of God be upon him. Do you believe Christ died on the cross? Therefore, it's a curse of God. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. The human man repelled that idea that a human being could become a God and then die again. I'm asking you a question. I want you, the audience, to transpose yourself back into the era of Mary. 2,009 years ago. I want you to put yourself in that stage. Imagine you were there when Mary was having a baby and you were a nurse and you're supposed to help Mary. And Mary, in the pain of giving birth, baby Jesus starts coming out. And you help her to be a nurse to bring him out. That puny little baby with blood and mire and umbilical cord, helpless baby, was your God, your Allah, your Jehovah Witness. Stuck for Allah. I stuck for Allah. The human man repelled that idea that a baby helpless could be a God. You think about it this. Does it befit God? It doesn't befit God. That is what we are talking about. That God cannot be a human being. He's beyond human. 
Did he die on the cross? You said he died on the cross. Did he die on the cross? You said he died on the cross. But we see in the book of uh, 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 Hebrew, the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 7, talking about whether Christ died on the cross or not. Please, I want you to listen to what the Bible said about whether Christ died on the cross or did not die on the cross. The book of Hebrew, chapter 5, verse 7, it reads, Who in the days of his flesh, referring to Jesus, at the time that he was in flesh, walking flesh and bone, he offered up prayers and supplication and crying and tears to the only one who can save him from death, and he was heard. This verse tells us that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross. Who in the days of his flesh, who? Jesus, he offered up prayers and supplication and tears and crying to the only one God who can save him from death, and he was heard. Heard from what? The prayer that he gave in the book of Luke, Matthew, which I quoted, that he was falling down. He doesn't want to die. But according to you, Jesus Christ and God have made an agreement that 7,000 years ago after Adam, Christ will come and die for mankind. But as you can see on the cross, what did he say? Eloi, Eloi, lama shabaktani. In Hebrew, in Arabic, Allah, Allah, lama taraktani. My God, my God, why do you forsake me? He's crying. He's supposed to have died willingly, according to the Christians. To die willingly for mankind. But he was on the cross crying, Eloi, Eloi, lama shabaktani. Somebody else was on the cross. The Quran said, Wama kataluhu, wama salabuhu. They did not kill him. They did not crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّخَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِي نَخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكِّ مِنْهُمْ مَا لَكُمْ بِهِ مِنْ إِلِمْ إِلَّا اتِّبَاءَ الزَّنْ وَمَا قَتَلُهُ يَكِينًا بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ They did not kill him and they did not crucify him. But it was made to appear to them so. What was made to appear to them? The fact that he died on the cross. Yes, someone was hung on the cross that day in the, on Calvary cross. Someone was hung on the cross in Golgotha. Someone was indeed hung on the cross, but that was not Jesus. So Allah said, وَإِنَّ فِيهِ لَفِي شَكِّ مِنْهُمْ Those who are involved about the case of death of Jesus, مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ إِلِمْ They don't have the exact knowledge of what happened to them. Why? Because إِلَّا تِبَا azan. They follow conjecture, guesswork, fiction. They think that's what happened. They were not there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, none of them saw the crucifixion of Christ. They were not there. Because the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 50, said, During the most critical time of the life of Christ, all his disciples forsook him and fled. They ran away at the time that they came to arrest him. Mark said, During the most critical time of the life of Christ, all his disciples, all means all, none of them saw what happened. All forsook him and fled. Where did they go? They went to upper room. They went to a place called Upper Room. That is where they used to meet. And that's where the disciples went and hide. None of them saw what happened in the cross. So the Quran said, Those who are involved about his death, they don't have the knowledge of what happened. Because Mark said they all forsook him and fled. They follow conjecture, guesswork. That's what happened. I think so. It's a, that's why you find contradiction. Today, the question is, is the Bible the word of God? I would have discussed that issue, but this is not the issue. I would have proved 100% that the Bible has been mutilated. Mutilated beyond recognition. It's been changed. Every, I have 28 Bibles in my house. I have 28 Bibles in my house. None is the same. Billahi azim none is the same. Different books. The, Roman, the New International Version, the Revised Standard Version, the Mormon Version, the Lutheran Version. You think it's the same, it's a holy book, but it is not the same by God. Because he left, he left Catholic and came to Protestant. <laughs> Meaning they have different Bible. You should be ashamed of yourself. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. I want you to listen. Keep the emotion to the end. This is a serious issue. My salvation is hung on the cross of Jesus. If my salvation is on his cross, Jesus Christ has to make an explicit statement that, look, I am coming to die for you. He never made such a statement. It was written about him more than 300 years after him. Who wrote the book of Matthew? He ask him, he will say Matthew wrote it. Matthew did not write the book of Matthew, which you quoted from. How do I know? The book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9. Listen to what happened. It says, while he, Jesus, 
was going out on the way, he saw a man sitting on a tax collector's table. And Jesus said, follow him. And Matthew rose and followed him. Did Matthew wrote this book? Matthew did not write this book. Someone else was writing. If Matthew wrote it, it would have been while Jesus Christ was walking on the way, he saw me sitting down and he said, follow me. And I rose and followed him. But this one, <laughs> somebody else is writing these books. I'm telling you. So, Mr. Lazaro, I hope next time you bring your guru, your pastor, your big man, so he could talk to me. But it looks like I'm fighting with my cousin, fighting with a kid. That's how it looks like now. I'm not feeling it. You didn't give me anything. 30 minutes wasted for nothing. Talk about the issue. The issue is salvation through Jesus, through the Bible, or through the Quran. And you've never talked this subject. All you do is to will, quote some Buhari, somewhere, you know, some books. Talk to me about salvation. But I'm giving you quotation. I'm proving from your book that Christ did not die on the cross. And the evidence is so clear. But the books as it is, it's been changed. Where? In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 8. It says, do you think that we have the law of Moses in our hand? No. The pen of those who write the Bible have turned it into a lie. I didn't say this, why it's in your book. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 8, I repeat. Jeremiah 24, 24. Jeremiah 8, 8. The New International Version said, Think not that we have the law of Moses and the prophet in our hands still. Behold, the pen of the scribe have turned the Bible in vain. They turn it in vain. And the Quran confirmed. They turned it in vain. Woe unto those who write the books with their own hand. And then they say it's from Allah. So that they will sell it and make some benefit out of it. Woe to the hand that writes it and woe to the benefit they make out of it. Bas. So the issue at hand is a big one. The issue at hand, it is not an easy, it, it is about salvation. But I have given you Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, where Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to destroy the law of Moses and the other prophets. No, I have not come to destroy. I have come to fulfill. Whosoever cancel a law, a law cancel or a dot from the law of Moses shall become least. But whosoever do the law of Moses shall become great. So Jesus Christ is coming to confirm the law of Moses. And now as we read in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 30, Jeremiah said, The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, nor the son bear the iniquity of the father. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20, it says, God speaking, God Almighty speaking, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The father shall not bear the iniquity of the son, neither the son bear the iniquity of the father. The wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him, and the righteousness of the righteousness shall be upon him. But if the wicked turn around and do which is good, I, God Almighty, I will blot his sin, and I will never remember it. This is Islam. The father will never bear. Why would Allah burn me in hell? When Adam ate the apple, was I there? Did I ask Adam to eat the apple? Couldn't God forgive Adam? God said, you are forgiven, therefore that's it. We say, Allah, God is all gracious, most merciful. Yet, he couldn't say, oh, Adam, you are forgiven. He said, you know what? This sin is too great. It's too powerful. I cannot forgive. What I'm going to do is this. That I'm going to wait 5,000 years after Adam, I will come in the womb of a human being, a Mary, and then she will give birth, and I will become a human being, and I will walk and talk, and then I will be beaten. I will be kicked. I will be slashed. I will be cut. I will be beaten. I will be stripping naked, and then with a napkin, hung on the cross, then my blood will suffer. Is this what they're supposed to be? That's, it's, 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 it's very sad. You're making a mockery of God. You're making a mockery of God. That is what is killing the Muslims. You're making a mockery of the Savior. That, 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 that God Almighty will come on earth and die. Okay, when he died for three days, who is controlling the universe? Galaxies, seas, oceans, nations. Imagine Pigeon Sound. That director on the Pigeon Sound, if he go to sleep, the whole will burn. Allah's galaxy, billions and billions of galaxies. Where are they going? Who is three days you said he died? Kaput. Who control the universe? Yeah, the logic cannot accept this. Logic will never accept this. So Christ did not die on the cross. Why I did I say that? If you look at the book of Mark, book of uh, Luke 24, 36. 
When the disciples ran away, they didn't know what happened. They didn't know where Jesus went. What happened to him, they don't know. They went to the upper room. So, Jesus walked in the upper room. Luke 24, 36. And Jesus walked in the upper room. And he said to the disciple, peace be unto you. And the disciples were terrified and afraid. Because they thought they have seen a ghost. What did he say? He said, peace be unto you, to the disciple. That's what the Bible said. Luke 24, 36. Check it out. Luke 24, 36. Jesus walked in the, in, the, in the upper room. And the disciple, and he said, peace be unto you. I'm asking, did Jesus say, peace be unto you? Did he say, peace be unto you in English? What language did he spoke? Hebrew. Or, or, you know, Aramaic. In Aramaic, how do you say, peace be unto you? Peace be unto you in, he, in, in Hebrew and Aramaic.